My name is Jaden. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. And I'm Caden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We know your time is very important. And so we are here making the most of your time, and hopefully it will be a very thorough time as we investigate the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator, and we are going through the book of Genesis, and um, we haven't found any commands for a while, <clears throat> and my voice keeps getting better, but I keep getting owned. Just tonight, it got a little bit worse. So we are up to commandment 15, and we are up to Genesis 39. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, how's everybody out there? Good. 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 Yep, thank you guys. Thank you everybody out there um, for hanging out with us. We do appreciate it, and um, we learn a lot from you guys as well. So here we are, Genesis 39. And Yosef was brought down <clears throat> to Mitzram, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, a Mitzri, brought him of the hands of Yishmaelim, which had brought him down hither. And Yahuwah was with Yosef, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his Adonai, the Mitzri. And his Adonai saw that Yahuwah was with him, and that Yahuwah made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Yosef found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him an overseer of his house over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all the, that he had, that Yahuwah blessed the Mitzri's house for Yosef's sake. And the blessing of Yahuwah was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Yosef's hand, and he knew uh, not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Yosef was a goodly person and well favored. Now, boys, how, gentlemen, how old was this fellow at this stage? You guys remember? Seventeen, eighteen, I think. Yeah, he was about eighteen years old, I think. Pretty young, so he was a young um, Ebri servant, and um, so here we are. And uh, verse seven, and it came to pass after these things that his Adonai's woman cast her eyes upon El Yosef, and she said, "Lie with me," but he refused and said unto the woman. Of his Adonai. Behold, my Adonai knows not what is with me in the house, and he has committed all that he has to my hand. Now, isn't Potiphar like a, isn't he a eunuch? Didn't we read later on? Mm, or no. something, there was something funky no, with Potiphar. he has a child. Does he? Yeah, he has a child. Didn't we read this? Am I totally out of my mind? I'm, okay, I'm out of my no, mind. I think there's, there's another Potiphar. The name somewhere else in Egypt. I think a little bit after this, there's another Potiphar. All right, strike that. This is not the man. Oh, this guy's that's just everybody's a Potiphar? I think, I think so. Like, Caesar, yeah. Caesar's, Caesar's like, Pharaohs, and Potiphar's. It's like everyone's named Bob or something. <laughs> that's an American name. Okay, so strike that, please. Okay, so we are at, uh, but he refused, committed all that he has to my hand. Nice, right? There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but you, because you are his woman. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against Elohim? And it came to pass, as she spoke to El Yosef day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. Now, what did it mean when he said he would um, he would sin against Elohim? What is he talking about here? Uh, he knew the laws that he shouldn't be committing fornication or adultery. Yeah, but there's there's what laws? There's no laws at this point. I mean, where does it say this? And they obviously had something. Yeah, so he he the. They knew. I mean, they knew. They, were, they knew that it was bad. I mean, even if without law, it's a bad thing to do. Well, yeah, it's absolutely. But I mean, this guy didn't want to sin against El Elohim, so um, he obviously knew that that was something that we shouldn't do. Um, <clears throat> and it came to pass about this time that Yosef. Uh, did I do that? Did I do ten? Are we at ten, Nicole? Yeah, we already did ten. Okay, and it came to pass about this time that Yosef went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the men of the house there within. And, okay, so I keep interrupting. What festival was this? Remember this? I don't. You guys remember this? There was a huge festival, and everybody was out there, and she got, she got rid of everybody in, his, in her house. I don't remember. Okay, and she caught him by his garment, saying, Lie with me, and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. And it came to pass when she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth, that she called unto the men of her house and spoke unto them, saying, See, he has brought in an ivory unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried that he left his garment with me and fled and got him out. And she laid up his garment by her 
until his Adonai came home. And she spoke unto him according to these words, saying, The every servant which you have brought in unto us came in unto me to mock me. And it came to pass, as I lifted up my voice and cried, that he left his garment with me and fled out. And it came to pass, when his Adonai heard the words of his woman, which she spoke unto him, saying, After this manner did your servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And Yosef's Adonai took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound, and he was there in the prison. But Yahuwah was with Yosef and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Yosef's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison, and whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand, because Yahuwah was with him, and that which he did, Yahuwah made it to prosper. Okay, so a couple good points here. One is for you young people out there, um, it's going to be extremely hard to run, to flee away when, when you have a seducing woman. This woman was probably rich. She was probably had like all well to do. She probably had all the great perfumes that drugged the men and, and do this. And it wasn't just one day. This was day after day after day. She was breaking him down. And then one day. Willpower. Who, yeah, willpower. Well, are you going to have the willpower? Are you guys going to be able to please Elohim? I think so. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a totally different story when you're under the power of a seductive woman. I it's it's crazy. So I just, I'll just stay inside. You'll stay inside. I'll just stay inside. <laughs> what does that mean? Stay inside. Uh, I just I just don't leave. I just don't leave the house. Don't leave the house to have a farm forever. I just stay here. <laughs> I ain't got no problem here. Well, that's the thing. When Yah says it's time, you know, there's going to be somebody who wanders out of the jungle. And uh, all of a sudden, it's going to be, uh, I don't know, what, are they, what is on a Disney flick, t- Twitter paid in? When uh, the, the, the rabbit falls in love with the other rabbit. Oh, and what's Bam- Bambi? Bambi. You don't remember that? No. We didn't watch a lot of Disney shows, but I did as a kid. So, yeah, that, that's a, they, they fall in love. It's called, they're Twitter paid. So. Wait, which rabbit? Thumper? I think so. <laughs> I don't remember this. Uh, I'm so sorry. Disney completely satanic. What's crazy is everybody's boycotting Disney now because they're all in with this uh, A B C D E F G L G Q P twenty X R S twenty you know all that jive. They're all down with it, right? And so they're gonna have one in like four or five of their characters by the end of this year are all going to be flying a rainbow flag, right? It's gonna be Merman, Mermana. Or mer- merman, <laughs> merman, <laughs> it's gonna be merman. Who was the other one we saw the other day? Uh, Broke <laughs> Bro- <laughs> Bro- on, us. yeah. Um, so here we are. Um, this is this world is completely fallen. It is completely disgusting. It is completely um, out of covenant with Yah. Yeah, it's Sodom and Gomorrah, and it's it's straight here. And uh, <clears throat> boy, anyone notice the uh, the hearts blowing up these days? That's all I'll say. Genesis 40, and it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Mitzrayim and his baker had offended their Adonai, the king of Mitzrayim. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in the ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Yosef was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Yosef with them, and he served them, and they continued a season in the ward. So they were there a bit, a season in the ward. Who knows? That's... Probably months. Could be three months or whatever the seasons are over there. Yep. Verse 5. And they dreamed a dream, both of them. Each man his dream in one night. Each man according to the interpretation of his dream. The butler and the baker of the king of Mitzram, which were bound in the prison. And Yosef came in unto them in the morning and looked up on them. And behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Adonai's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, we have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Yosef said unto him, unto them, Do not interpretations belong to Elohim? Tell me then, I pray you. And the chief butler told his dream to Yosef, and said to him, In my dream, behold, a vine was before me, and, the, and in the vine were three branches, and it was as though it budded, and her blossoms shot forth, and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. And Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Yosef said unto him, This is the interpretation of it. The three branches are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up your head and restore you unto your place, and you shall deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand and the former manner when you were his butler. But think on me 
when it shall be well with you, and show kindness, I pray you, unto me, and make mention of me unto Pharaoh, and bring me out of this house. So was this a lack of faith? Yeah, it actually was. Uh, Elohim and Jasher, actually, that's why he served 12 years in this, because he was only supposed to do a couple of years, but Yah like, uh, was testing him, and he uh, failed the test. He didn't rely on Yah. He just said, hey... Uh, make me one of Pharaoh's men instead yeah, of yeah. So he he didn't he may have understood that he was being blessed, but everywhere he goes, he's blessed, and that's one of the blessings of walking with Elohim, is that he blesses your walks. And I mean, you can you can look around your life and you can see the blessings that, that you have or or lack thereof if you if you don't want to keep them. Okay, uh, verse fifteen. For indeed, I was stolen away out of the land of of the Ivrim, and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good, he said unto El Yosef, I also was in my dream, and behold, I had three white baskets on my head. And in the uppermost basket there was of all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh, and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And Yosef answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up your head from off you, and shall hang you on a tree, and the birds shall eat your flesh from off you. And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants, and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. But he hanged the chief baker, as Joseph had interpreted to them. Yet did not the chief butler remember Joseph, but forgot him. All right. Anyone have any commandments? Anything, no. Anything yet? Okay, Nothing so yet. anything to add to the stories? Uh, the reason these two went to a uh, prison, the, the, uh, yours says the butler, mine says the cupbearer, and the uh, baker. Uh, they, uh, the the uh, cupbearer, he, the butler, he had flies in the wine, mm. and uh, the baker, he the ended up with rocks. rocks in the bread. I don't know how so you the Pharaoh's like break his teeth on rocks. Know, how, you mess, <laughs> how do you mess that one up? How do you get rocks in your brain? He probably had the dough in his hands while he dropped it on the ground and just didn't clean it off. He just threw it back in the oven. Pharaoh probably cracked his teeth out or something. Like that. that was it. Yeah, that was well, he done it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's it. So let's roll on to another one. We're making a really good time with this one. It's 12 minutes. Rock and rolling. All right, 41. And it came to pass at the end of two years, of the two full years, that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored, kiny, and fat-fleshed. What's your say, gentlemen? Uh, it says uh, seven coming up out of the river, fine-looking and fat. Oh, say. Well-favored Well-favored. Okay, so some good-looking cows came up out of there, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kiny came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kiny up on the brink of the river. What's what's kiny? Cows, I think. Stood by the what do you guys have? Right the bank of the stood by the bank of the river. Yeah, brink of the river. The bank of the river. Yeah, stood the other kind. I think the other. Uh, fat cows. Okay, so fat cows, kindy fat cows. Verse four, and the ill-favored and lean-fleshed fat cows did so eat. Ugly cows. Oh, ugly cows, kindy lean-fleshed kindy. I think so the kindy is cows, kindy is cow. I think cows. it's like a herd. Kindy is cow, right? Or yeah. herd, right? Okay, and the ill-favored and lean-fleshed. Kiny did eat up the seven well-favored fat kiny. So Pharaoh awoke, and he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of grain came up upon one stalk, rank and good. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his ruach was troubled. So his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Mitzram and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spoke the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward within the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was and there was there with us a young man, an every servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he did interpret. And it came to pass as he interpreted it to us. So it was. Me he restored unto my office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Yosef, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and shaved him, and he shaved him, 
and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto El Yosef, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. And Yosef answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. Elohim shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. And Pharaoh said unto El Yosef, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kiny, fat-fleshed and well-favored, favored, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kiny came up after them, poor and very ill-favored and lean-fleshed, such as I have never saw in all the land of Mitzrayim for badness. And the lean and the ill-favored kiny did eat up the first seven fat kiny. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known that they had eaten them. But they were still ill-favored as at the beginning. So I awoke. And I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up in one stalk, full and good. And behold, seven ears withered thin, and blasted in the east winds sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears, and I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it unto me. And Yosef said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one. Elohim has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good kine are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. And the seven thin and ill-favored kine that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What Elohim is about to do, he shows unto Pharaoh. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Mitzrayim, and there shall arise after them seven years of famine, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Mitzrayim, and the famine shall consume the land. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following, for it shall be very grievous. And for that dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by Elohim, and Elohim will shortly bring it to pass. Now therefore let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise, and set him over the land of Mitzrayim. Let Pharaoh do this, and let him appoint officers over the land, and take up the fifth part of the land of Mitzrayim in the seven plenteous years. And let them gather all the food of those good years that come, and lay under grain, lay up grain under the hand of Pharaoh, and let them guard food in the cities. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Mitzrayim, that the land perish not through the famine. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Ruach Elohim is? And Pharaoh said unto El Yosef, for as much as Elohim has showed you all this, there is none so discreet and wise as you are. You shall be over my house, and according to your word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said unto El Yosef, See, I have set you over all the land of Mitzrayim. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Yosef's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck, about his neck. And he made him a ride, made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had. And they cried before him, bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Mitzrayim. And Pharaoh said unto El Yosef, I am Pharaoh. And without you shall no man lift up his hand or his foot in all the land of Mitzrayim. And Pharaoh called Yosef's name Zopanath, Panake, Panich. And he gave him to be his woman, Asinath, the daughter of Padi, Padia, Pharaoh, Padi Pharaoh. Priest of On, and Yosef went out over all the land of Mitzrayim. All right, so <clears throat> I guess he didn't want a uh, foreign woman, but he ended up with a not only a foreign woman, but like a priest of, of a priest, a priest of whatever. And they're on. not priest like, and that's not the priest of Yah. It's like a priest, that's like the dude that's like uh, doing spells and things of that sort. Yeah. Like Balaam or something. Yeah, that's some wicked dude. So, so now he has this uh, dude. It's probably in his. I mean, this is a big deal man marrying the priest's daughter and stuff That's like that wild. so yeah the and he's the he's the best dude in all of Mitzrayim and so Joseph's he, about 30 at this point so 30 so he spent uh about 12 13 years in jail 12 or 13 years in in dungeons and uh so he definitely saw his his place of dungeons okay oh there it is it just says it next 46 and Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh king of Mitzrayim and Yosef went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Mitzrayim. And in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, which were in the land of Mitzrayim, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every day, laid he up in the same. 
And Yosef gathered grain in the sand as the sand of the sea very much until he left numbering, for he was without number. What does your say? Without uh, does Joseph gather very much grain as the sand of the sea until he ceased counting, for it was without number? Okay. And unto Joseph, verse 50, unto Joseph were born two sons before the years of famine came, which Esnath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On, bore unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for Elohim said, He has made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim, for Elohim has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Mitzrayim were ended. And the seven years of famine began to come, according as Yosef had said. And the famine was in all lands, but in all the land of Mitzrayim there was bread. And when all the land of Mitzrayim was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said unto all the Mitzrayim, Go unto El Yosef, what he says to you, do. And the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Yosef opened all the storehouses and sold unto the Mitzrayim. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Mitzrayim. And all countries came to into Mitzrayim to El, to El Yosef to, for to buy grain, because that the famine was sore in all the lands. And so we will in that, we'll keep it short tonight, 21 minutes. And um, guys, that is it. Um, anybody have anything on these three chapters? Uh, Yah is always watching you. If you, don't, if you stay in his ways, he will help you. Yeah, and he will help you through and all maybe, this stuff. It might be 15 years, but y'all is still going to have a plan. Yeah, and that's the thing. is Everybody's looking for instant gratification in everything. And so sometimes the answer isn't no to a prayer. Sometimes the answer is wait. And sometimes the answer may be yes, but it may be 15 years later. And so we must always trust and obey. We must shema. Eli, what does that mean to Shema? Hear, O Yisrael, hear, hear and do, hear and obey. Hear and obey. And so if we are Shemaing, that means we are to hear and obey. And um, what, is it, what is it we're obeying? What is it we're, we're hearing and obeying? The Torah, his words. Yeah, his Torah and his words. And his Torah, what are we supposed to do with it? Uh, right upon our hearts and our minds. Yeah, and our souls and make sure that we have it. And why would you want, why does it even matter if we know the, the Torah? Because it's something we are going to be judged by. If we know we uh, should be following it and we, we know that it was for us and for the people that want to be part of Yah's kingdom and we don't do it, we're going to be judged. He's going to come up to us one day and he's be like, why didn't, you, why didn't you keep my commands? Why did you disobey what I said? And he's going to say, depart from me, you, you worker of iniquity. You, want, you do his lawlessness. I do not know you. Yep, absolutely. Okay, and so this is why we do this. We do this because we are out fishing for men. And so hopefully somebody out there we can snag... Snag for the kingdom of Yah. Is there a frog over there on the ground? Yep. There's a frog in our house. Okay, sorry guys. Um, yes, we do this for the kingdom of Yah. And we do this because that we um, have been blessed by Yah. We have been tasked with this. And every one of us that knows the Torah is tasked with telling others about the Torah. Even if we look like idiots or feel like fools, um, we are tasked with that. All right, everybody. We love you guys. Thank All you guys right. so much for hanging out. And that is it. Shalom. Shalom.